I just thank you for this wonderful day and this time that um, we're able to come to you and worship with all we have. God, and I just pray as we continue throughout our day that we'll just um, praise you in everything that we do and everything that we say. And as uh, the speaker comes up, God, I pray that we'll listen um, with everything. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Hey, before I get started with what we're going to do today, I just want to say, did we have a great homecoming week last week? Did you guys like that? We made some changes. I just want to acknowledge just the real hard work of Mr. Havens in that process, Ms. Walcott, Coach Petty. I know all the teachers were involved, but uh, really, let's give them a hand uh, for just all their work that they did to make uh, homecoming so special. And thank you all for your participation. We really appreciate that. And um, I thought it was a really great week. Um, our plan for today is uh, we're going to talk about something that should be on your bucket list. You guys, have, you guys heard of the term bucket list? Uh, it's things that you want to make sure that you get to do before you go to heaven to be with the Lord, right? And this is something that should be at the top of your bucket list in the next couple of years. For some of you, maybe like right now. And um, that is to attend a summit conference in the summer. And I'm a huge fan of Summit Ministries. It's an incredible resource. And um, if somebody were to ask you, why are you a Christian? Would you have a good response? If somebody were to ask you, why is Christianity true, what would you say? If somebody were to ask you, hey, why should I believe the Bible, would you have a good answer to that? These are the types of questions that we as Christians are going to be faced with and are faced with on a daily basis in our culture. And especially when you guys get to college, you're going to be bombarded by these types of questions, these type of skeptical questions of, oh, you really, wait, you don't really believe that, do you? Why do you really believe that? So guess what? We want to be ready to give an answer, as the Bible says in 1 Peter 3, 15, to everyone who asks for the reason for the hope that we have. We want to be ready to do that. And Summit is probably one of the best training grounds to get you started on that process. Yeah, we're going to do a lot of that here. We're going to do that in Understanding the Times class. But Summit is an additional opportunity for you to grow your mind and your heart as a Christian so that you'll be prepared to share the gospel. You'll be prepared to share what is objectively true about the world with everybody that you meet. And so, for me, that's a huge priority. And so, I think it should be a huge priority for all of us as Christians to be able to do that as well. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just take a little look at what Summit does. We're going to watch a little promo video. And then we're going to hear from two students that have been to the conference and what they've learned from it. Okay? So, let's roll the video, Mr. Havens. If I told you we're going to go and study Christianity as a worldview, and I could guarantee you that at the end of that time, you would say, I want to do that again. That's what Summit Worldview Conference is. There are three great struggles young adults are facing today. The first one is the question of purpose. What, what am I supposed to do with my life? What does God want from me? What is His will? The second one is their place. Where are they in life? I mean, if we were to float off down the river like Huckleberry Finn, would anybody even miss us? And then the third question is the question of truth. What is actually true? Everybody's out there making truth claims. How do I know that what I understand to be true about the world is actually true? Summit is really a place to come and learn how to think. Knowledge is really key in our faith. Uh, knowing what we believe, knowing uh, how to defend that, knowing what other people believe. And having this amazing walk with the Creator, a King, who loves you despite what you do. This is what's huge. Rudy and Nietzsche are right. Without God, everything, everything's up in the air. You've got to study it so it becomes a part of you. But unfortunately, Christians, we are perceived to be against gay people. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. 
Relationship is not something God does. Relationship is something God is. We really focus on that time around the table to eat meals together, time at the park playing together, time with mentors, talking with them one-on-one, -on -one, time in small groups to process through the things you've learned because it's in those relationships that truth really takes root. I think the coolest part of relationships here is that you are like living out your faith alongside other people. And so I think that's one of the biggest things I've taken out of Summit, that faith is a community thing. It's something that you do together with other Christians. Imagine if you could spend two weeks in a place where the best leaders in America would stand before you and challenge you and give you a sense of responsibility for what's going on in the world. And then imagine turning around and realizing you're sitting next to people who are gifted and fun to be around and they love God and they're preparing as well to be the sort of leaders who will be the future politicians, the future authors, the future scientists, great moms and dads. And you realize that Summit is more than just an experience of learning in a classroom. It's actually a way to get together with those who will be the future leaders and begin networking and growing with them now. It's a lifelong experience. It's not just these two weeks. It will impact the rest of my life for sure. Summit's just been a great place. It almost feels like home here. Whether you come to Colorado, whether you go to Tennessee, whether you go out to L.A. and Biola and do this, it's going to be fabulous. Trust me, you're going to want to be here come to summer. This is the one place I tell people. I say, if you're going to do one thing before you go to college, even after you're in college, if you're going to do one thing, you need to come for the two weeks at the summit. Spend two weeks with some of the best and brightest scholars in their fields on every aspect of Christian worldview from Bible to cultural engagement to other religious systems, I guarantee you, you won't regret it and you'll leave smarter, happier, and I think more devoted to Jesus than ever. Hello. I'm uh, Gus Landis, for those of you who don't know me. Um, <coughs> myself and Brock Waldrop right there, went to Summit last summer. We, uh, for two weeks, went to Manitou Springs, and if you don't know where that is, it's right next to Colorado Springs, and if you don't know where that is, look at a map. It's oh, a pretty good one. Okay, so the purpose of Summit, and I think you might have gathered from that video, is to both learn about other faiths and learn about your faith so that you might better defend and know what you believe. For, I would recommend Summit for any person who claims to be a Christian, and I would specifically recommend it for anyone who claims to be an apologist or someone who defends the faith, which you all kind of should be. Um, they get the top minds in the field from everywhere, which Rock will touch up on. But you, you saw uh, Jay Warner Wallace. He's a world-renowned cold case detective. Uh, Dr. Jeff Myers, is, he's hilarious, but also uh, co-founder of Summit and just genius. And so many others. And... The relationships also that you build there, you put in to a, uh, a small group, but then you also have your roommates. And I don't know about any, anyone else that was there, but my roommates were some of the best guys to talk to about. We just had hours of discussion after every lecture. And yes, there's a lot of lecturing, but it's in Manitou Springs. You're not going to get the views. I mean, I could look out the window and be like, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> I don't look out the window and say, oh, that's pretty here. <laughs> if you're worried about the food, the food's great. I mean, I can recommend this to Kingdom Come. There is... Everything about this place was just great for me. I wanted to spend another two weeks there when I was done. And, you know, I think you will too, Brock. <laughs> uh, 
Hello, I'm Brock Waldrop. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a very loud person, so the mic makes it even worse. I apologize. Um, and, uh, one analogy that you come from um, at Summit is that when you go there, it's like drinking out of fire hydrant. It's ridiculous the amount of information you get. And they tell you that from right from the beginning. And it, it's a lot of information. Like, I remember I came, I had the most massive headache one night, and I was completely worried because I thought I was going to miss the next day of lectures, which I did because it turned out I had a fever. But um, it was all good because um, they have a little video thing in the nursery. But anyways, um, <laughs> um, my, my favorite quote from, it was actually on the video, it says, uh, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. It, uh, it was by A.W. Towser, the, Tozer, yeah, I thought I was going to butcher the name, um, and it, it's, it's a really interesting quote, because you can go in really deep with it, or you can just go skin level with it, I guess. And, I mean, it's just however you want to interpret it. That's why it's my favorite, because there's so many different ways you can go about it. Um, the, the coolest thing is the speakers and how they want a personal relationship with you. Every speaker, after they spoke, they came to lunch and talked to you. And they would sit down at your table, or they would single you out uh, sometimes. Um, but most of the time, they would just sit at a table and just talk to you. Um, a very good, a dude who did this very well was Jeff Myers. He spoke consistently throughout the whole entire thing. He spoke more than anybody, and he has a lot to talk about. And there's also Mike Adams, uh, Josh uh, McDowell, Jay Warner Wallace, as Gus said, and David Nobel. All these guys, fantastic guys, really intelligent in their fields, and it's very impressive what they know. Um, Mike was Mike Adams. He he actually has the funniest stories. Like one time there was this rally about how everyone hates Mike Adams, and he goes and attends it and yelling, "I hate Mike Adams!" And everyone looks at him. He's like, "Aren't you Mike Adams?" He's like, "Yeah. Um, can I speak now?" And um, they were very mad, very very mad. They like threw bananas at him or something, and it was really dumb. Then there was Josh McDowell, this dude who looks like he's going to die the next step he takes. Uh, the fool is old, all right? <laughs> he, he has really cool things. He has these manuscripts, the original manuscripts of the Bible, and he brings them. It was actually on the video, if you're paying any attention, and... Uh, they're just astounding what uh, is on the manuscripts. And then um, uh, Jeff Myers, he's really funny and wanted a personal relationship. I already said that. Gosh dang. Um, oh, Jay Warner Wallace. He was actually a detective, and he was an, a full-blown atheist. And then uh, he eventually came to know Christianity because being a detective, he was like, why do so many people believe in this? I'm so confused. And so he investigates it, and he, write, he has a book about it, and his findings are just out of the water, like brings chills. when he, It puts everything together to where it makes sense, and it makes it to where Christianity is. There's no way you could prove it wrong. So there, uh, and then there's also David Nobel. He's more of a comedy relief than anything because you're just going through classes, and you're almost brain dead at the end of the day. And then the last speech, David Nobel comes up, and he literally reads a list off and then ends it in, like, 15 minutes. And he's like, all right, into class. And class is, like, for an hour. So we just sit there and literally, like, talk and pick each other's hair. Um, <laughs> so uh, there, at Summit, you will make, like, crazy amount of friends. Uh, I um, actually keep in contact with every, almost every single one of them. Uh, I talk to them like every other day almost. So one, uh, one time I talked to them like for, like we had a group chat, but that got really old really fast. And uh, thank God that ended. But, <laughs> 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 but, 
people would say a bunch of stupid stuff, and it was just really, really unnecessary. Um, uh, but when you go there, I was honest, me and Gus were actually doing the youngest group there, uh, I, but there was one kid who was 15, I don't know how he got in, I think he like snuck in through the back door or something. Um, but yeah, you will meet like 23 year olds and it, it's just really amazing the Christian people that you meet there. So yeah, that's some ministries. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, Gus. Thanks for keeping it real with us. Uh, <laughs> but if I'm going to translate all of that, if I'm going to translate that for you, some of it is awesome. It will change your life, guaranteed. And we have this great dream, this great vision here at Trinity. I know Mrs. Kitten has taken a van load of students uh, up to Summit to a session for the last couple of summers, and it's awesome. We want that van to be full or maybe overflowing and eventually be taking our bus up to Summit to where we are going to Christian boot camp, so to speak, okay? Because that's what you guys need to be prepared for, okay? Um, there's a spiritual battle out there. And Satan's trying to take you down. And so you guys need to be equipped. And you need to be seeking out the best training possible. That's probably why you're at Trinity Christian School, right? So that you can live your life for Christ. And you can not only defend the faith, but live it out. And be a blessing. And um, make an impact on your world for Christ. That's what we all want, right? And so Summit is an incredible resource. And I think we have some, maybe some of the nuts and bolts of it up here now on the screen. Maybe. Snapshot. There we go. So this is for uh, 16 to 22-year-olds. So some of you are not there yet, but some of you are right there. And um, uh, yes, you can be a little bit older probably. It's a 12-day conference. You can go to one in Colorado. That's the most convenient one, but there's also some in Tennessee or if you want to go out to California um, to Biola University, you can do that as well. Um, and there's dates throughout the summer. And um, what we'd like to do is try and find a week where we just take a bunch of Trinity, like Trinity Week at Summit. And so we just bring everybody, and we mark it on our calendars, and um, it's going to be um, transformative for your life. And so um, we just wanted to advertise that to you, to promote, to promote it to you. And um, I love this quote from John Stone Street there at the bottom. If you're not intentional about your worldview, you will have one. It just won't be the right one. And so... Um, Ideas have consequences, and they have consequences for your life and for the lives of others. We want to make sure, sure we have the right ideas, don't we? So um, stay tuned for some more information about Summit and maybe what Trinity Week is going to be our week up there. And we invite you all to come, and some of you to come in the future. Put that on your bucket list, as I said. Okay? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for who you are, God. We thank you that... Uh, your word is truth, and we can trust it implicitly, that we can stand on it, that we can get great strength from it, God. Your word says not to conform to the pattern of this world, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so we thank you for uh, ministries like Summit Ministries, Lord, that come alongside us, that partner with us, that train young people to be difference makers, to truly rock their world for Christ, Lord. I pray that um, you have impressed on the hearts of some of our students that yeah, that's me. I want to do that. I want to make a difference in the world for Christ. And so, um, Lord, I pray that um, we would, um, as a school, train leaders for Christ in partnership with Summit Ministries, Lord. We just thank you for what you're doing there and here to train us to be difference makers in your world, to fulfill the Great Commission, to be blessings to others, and to follow Christ, Lord. Help us to do that today as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. Go to class.